Hi, this is Rob Kelly, and this short PowerPoint video is going to discuss the differences between the way people process experiences and events in life in either an internal or external way. Internal and external obviously refer to locus of control, and locus of control is about how powerful a person feels, how much self-efficacy they have, how much they believe they have the skills and resources to overcome any hurdles in life and basically thrive. So if you imagine then that you have a situation or event of life, take for example, excuse me, two people walking down the street on a cold dark winter's evening. One of these people is generally an internal person and one of these people is generally an external person. And all that means on a very basic level is they are in the habit of viewing life in a certain way. That's all it means. Very, very similar to optimism or pessimism. Optimists, generally speaking, have a more optimistic view of life, where a pessimist has a more negative view of life. Locus of control is the same. An internal person, generally speaking, is in the habit of viewing experiences in life in an internal way. An external person, generally speaking, is in the habit of viewing things in an external manner. So, we have our two people walking down the road on a cold, blustery evening, both feeling a little depressed and a little bit unhappy. The internal person is going to look inside themselves and think, hmm, what am I doing to cause this feeling? And the external person is more likely to think, hmm, what's happening to me to cause this? One's looking inside, the other's looking outside. The internal person who asks themselves, hmm, what am I doing to cause this, has stayed relaxed, hasn't caused any or created any anxiety about the situation because they feel powerful. They immediately realise that they're creating the feeling or the situation or, or the response to the situation that they're currently um, experiencing and they're confident in their ability to create a more positive outcome. They're confident in their ability to change you. Or why wouldn't you be? If I realised I'm making myself sad, then also at the same time I'm realising I can make myself not feel sad and actually feel quite happy. The external person, on the other hand, who thought, hmm, what's happening to me, immediately hits a dead end. That blue sign there, that's a dead end sign. They hit this brick wall, they hit a dead end. Because the moment they attribute their symptoms to an external cause, the moment they believe the weather is making them depressed, bang, there's nothing they can do about it. They can't change the weather. So they hit this brick wall, they stay depressed, they feel powerless to change anything about it, and more importantly, they lose the ability to think critically about the situation. Once you've concluded that your experience is caused by this, you then don't go looking for other evidence. You then don't go looking for other reasons because you've already come to your conclusion. That's what conclusion means. It means you're at the end of your research. You're at the end of your looking for reasons and causes and attributions. You've come to your conclusion. The weather's causing this problem. Bam, I hit this brick wall. The internal person then takes action to change or respond to their situation. I realised... I'm thinking in a certain way and overreacting to this weather. I'm going to change that. I'll be indoors soon. I'll be home. I'll be at work. I'll be out with friends in a pub. Things will be much better. My mood lifts. I feel better. The external person is still at that brick wall, not going anywhere. The internal person achieves a positive outcome. They change their mood. And this immediately reinforces their sense of power and internality making them feel even more in control, making them further realise that life is predictable or that outcomes in life are predictable and that they have skills and resources to make changes. The point is, all the way through this exercise, the internal person stays calm, they stay relaxed, they don't create stress or anxiety, they don't react in a, in a catastrophic manner because they stay calm, because they feel resourceful. They know they've created the situation and they know they can change it. The external person who's given an external reason to their experience, be the external reason social anxiety or fate or luck or religion or God or their past, for example, 
You'd be surprised that the vast majority of people believe their self-esteem is really about their childhood. Well, if a person's self-esteem is caused by their childhood, they can't possibly change it. They're screwed. They're, they're going to have to stay with that self-esteem level for the rest of their life. An internal person realises that self-esteem is very rarely more than a couple of weeks old because it's all about the way you think now. Therefore, they find it easy to change their self-esteem levels. An example here would be a lovely client I had a few years ago. And this chap, he was very anxious about a number of situations. One of them was driving on the motorway and another was heights. I saw him on a Wednesday and I remember very clearly him saying to me, for example, Rob, I know I'm going to be in trouble tomorrow. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, well, we've got our AGM in Leeds tomorrow and I just know I'm going to talk myself out of going. I said, okay, why is that? He said, well, you know I hate driving on the motorway and it's at this hotel that's really high and the training rooms are on the top floor and the bedrooms are all upstairs. I just get vertigo, I feel sick, I hate it and I just know I'm going to talk myself out of going. And I said, okay, well, why don't you do this? Why don't you get the train up tomorrow morning, get the breakfast train from Cambridge. It's only about 90 minutes. You can have a nice, calm, relaxing breakfast on the train, read your newspaper or read your meeting notes for tomorrow, and you arrive feeling fresh and alert. Better still, why don't you, tonight before you go, phone the hotel and request a room on the ground floor? And if your boss asks, just say, well, i got to get bad back or I didn't want to use the elevator or something. If there isn't a uh, room at the hotel on the ground floor, Phone your nearest hotels and find one that has got a bedroom on the ground floor and book that. And again, if your boss asks, you'd say you got a bad back and you needed to find somewhere where you get plenty of sleep. At this point, the client looks at me in amazement and his face completely lights up and said, Oh my God, that's brilliant, Rob, that's brilliant. And I said, no, 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 don't tell me you've never thought that. In the 10 years you've been doing this job, and he was a regional manager for a national company, by the way, don't tell me you've never thought that. And he said, I've never thought that in my life. That's because the moment he, uh, the moment he attributed an external reason to his event or situation, he hit that brick wall and he stopped his critical thinking at that point. He didn't think, oh my God, this is terrible. I'm about to be eaten by a load of sharks. Oh, but there's probably something I can do about it. Because of course you don't think that if you're about to be eaten by a load of sharks. The moment you attribute an external reason to something happening in your life, you render yourself powerless. And there is always a cost. People often say to me, oh, come on, Rob. So I say good luck. So I believe in fate. So I occasionally read my horoscope. So I believe in God or life after death or even ghosts. You know, it's not really doing me any harm, is it? Yes, it is, is the real answer. Because whenever you have an external belief, an external attribution for something there is always a cost there's a cost to your critical thinking i.e you stop thinking there might be other reasons for it and there's a cost to the amount of effort you put in emotionally for example if you believe your depression is caused by the weather you're not really going to put effort in to stop or change that if you believe that your me is caused by a virus you're not going to put effort into managing your thinking if you believe that you're just not fit enough to run a marathon you're not going to try. People that have an internal locus have the skills and resources and more importantly perhaps the beliefs that they can make these changes. They can do something about it. This is the principal difference between people that process experiences in life in an internal and powerful way or an external and powerless way. There is always a cost to external thinking. Uh, principally you lose the ability for critical thinking. And I'll give you a final example. A person that believes in ghosts or, or spirits and hears some strange noises or sees something funny at night is likely to attribute that to a ghost. The moment you've come to your conclusion it's a ghost, you then stop thinking about what else it could be. The moment one comes to a conclusion, you then stop looking. Of course, that's what conclusion means. You're at the end of your investigation, my conclusion is, oh my God, I saw this thing last night. It was a ghost. You then don't think, ah, but it could have been just the light in the room. It could have just been my imagination. It could have been fumes from the uh, woodwork I was doing earlier. The moment you attribute an external reason to something happening in your life, there is always a cost 
and you lose that critical thinking, that ability to think in a more internal manner. And don't forget, as I said in the very beginning, this is just a habit. It's a habit that the person is in principally because they were trained by their parents or their school or their society to do this. In the same way as most of us were caught to catch a ball when a ball's thrown or kicked towards us, people are taught to think in a certain way. People are taught to process information in either an internal or an external way. Thanks very much for watching.